Hey guys, this here is my latest DIY project. It's a solar power bank. It comes with this built-in solar cell so you can recharge it directly from the sun. It has an 8000 mAh battery built in. It comes with a very powerful USB output and I have even included an emergency flashlight. Let me show you how I made it. Now, solar power banks are nothing new. Actually, I got one a few years ago out of curiosity, but when I tested it, I found out that the solar cell was putting out so little power that it was practically useless. And I knew that I could make a better power bank. This thing will charge in a couple of days if you leave it out in the sun. Before I move on to the build process, I want to thank Altium for sponsoring this video. Altium Designer is a powerful PCB and electronics design software, which you can test for free using the link in the video description. With Altium Designer, you can create circuits using real components and design professional printed circuit boards for your project. I've been testing Altium Designer myself for some time, and I can say that it's definitely worth checking out. Use the link in the video description to get a free trial. Now back to the project. For my solar power bank, I chose to use this relatively large solar cell, which can provide about 3 watts under direct sunlight. I know this may not sound like much, but it is enough to charge the built-in 8000 mAh battery in 10 hours under ideal conditions. Fortunately, charging a phone from the power bank takes a lot less time. This nifty USB output module delivers about 15 watts of power to my phone, and with support for quick charging, it can charge most phones reasonably fast. Another important element in this project is this solar charging controller. It supports maximum power point tracking, which is a fancy way of saying that it puts as much power as possible from the solar cell into the battery. The battery itself is made of three individual cells connected in parallel. This particular battery pack uses high-quality Samsung battery cells and contains a protection circuit against overcharge and over-discharge. It is also the most expensive part in the project, but I really wanted to use a quality battery, just to be safe. For the flashlight, I am using a cheap but powerful LED, which I got recently in a lucky bag from China. It is driven from a simple constant current driver set for about 1 watt of power. And this here is just a simple battery level meter. Here is a diagram of how everything is connected. You can pause the video to take a closer look. But before taking out the soldering iron, I had to test if the components would actually work together. So I connected the solar cell and the battery to the charging controller and went outside for a test. Luckily, it was a sunny day, so the solar cell was putting out a fair amount of power, between 2 and 3 watts. I called this a success and I proceeded with designing the enclosure. Now I won't go very deep into details here because that's gonna make a long and boring video and you guys don't like that. What I will say is that the box is made of plywood, mostly scrap pieces that I had laying around. The size and thickness of the enclosure were dictated by the dimensions of the solar cell and the battery. Most of the parts I cut on my CNC machine. That wasn't necessary in any way, but it was just faster and easier, especially for the smaller pieces and the cutouts for things like the LED or the charging port. Two of the sides are made of layers of plywood stacked on top of each other and glued together. I cut 6mm holes and put dowels inside them to help with the alignment. These two pieces I glued to a flat rectangular piece of plywood. Then I glued the other two side pieces. You can see the cutouts for the USB port, the battery level indicator, the LED light and the light switch. Since solar cells are fragile, on the flat side I made this raised lip for protection. And on the other side is the removable cover with legs in the corners. It is held in place by screws that go through the holes in the legs. Next, a few layers of spray lacquer for protection. After the enclosure was complete, I glued the solar cell in place using a few drops of hot glue. 
In hindsight, I should have probably used stronger glue or maybe more of it because this thing is gonna be under the sun for some time and I don't know if the glue is gonna hold up in the long run. For the USB output module, I glued two standoffs to a small piece of plywood. These standoffs are aligned to match two notches on the sides of the PCB. With the PCB mounted, I glued the piece of plywood in place after making sure that the USB port aligns perfectly with the cutout. The LED is mounted on a small piece of plywood with a cutout in the middle. It is held in place by another piece of plywood. The whole assembly is glued in place from the inside. For the battery, I made this holder and lined all the inner sides with foam tape. This is to make sure that the battery doesn't move and protects against damage in case the power bank falls on the floor. In the middle you can see this improvised holder for the charging control module. Next, I wired up the LED circuit and connected the constant current LED driver, but I intentionally cut the positive LED wire. This was so that I could measure the current going through it. Using a multimeter, I adjusted the driver to 220 milliamps and then soldered the wire. Now that everything is connected, I can put the cover on and hide this mess of wires. Finally, a piece of plastic goes over the LED for protection. I'm gonna call this project complete for now. I learned quite a lot of things and it was fun making it, but I cannot confidently say that you should go ahead and recreate it. One thing that worries me is that the USB output module gets quite hot. I measured it reaching up to 77 degrees under heavy load and I don't really know how reliable this module would be in the long run. I also wasn't able to implement a reliable way of charging this device over USB in case sunlight is not available and I should have probably included a fuse as an extra layer of protection. On the brighter side of things, I am happy to confirm that the solar charging feature does work. I left the power bank outside in the sun and it reached 75% in a couple of days. I cannot quite measure the full potential of this setup because, you know, December is not the best time to create solar circuits, but the results so far seem promising. I'm gonna leave this project as is right now, but I may revisit it in the summer. Okay guys, let me know in the comments if you have any questions about this DIY solar power bank or if you think that I should have made something differently. As always, thanks for watching and subscribe to my channel to never miss a future video.